need to be a lost one. Lost one. And what did he do at this? They sacrificed for the sake of our God. They sacrificed. They sacrificed their comfort. They sacrificed their lifestyle. They sacrificed, you know, their the coming of their families for the sake of our God. When Umar Salam radiallahu anhu and Abbas Salam realized, you know, Mecca is not a place for him. He is not a place for him. That's it. So he took his wife, his son, and he said, I'm going to make a year. To where? I don't know. I'm just leaving the city of Mecca. And he decided to go to the, towards the city of Medina before the Hijrah, before any of the Sahaba even came to the city of Medina. And subhanAllah, his family, they saw him leaving. Couldn't do anything. Her family, Umar Salma's family, they saw her leaving. So they said to Abu Salma, you're not taking our daughter with you. You're not taking her with you. And by force they separate between husband and wife. And Abu Salma he said, Allah will take care of you. Stay, have some. And then the family of Abu Salma immediately, they came and they said, this little boy that you have, he's from our tribe, he's our son. You, you know, we want our son back. And the father, the family of Umar Salama grabbed one arm, and the, and, the, and the family of Abu Salam grabbed the other arm, and they keep pulling, pushing, until they dislocated the shoulder of that child. They dislocated his shoulders. And then Umar Salama's family, they say, take it. So look, subhanAllah, she's not with her husband. She cannot communicate with him. Her only son is being taken away from her. And she is now alone with her family. For 12 more months, she will come out. She will sit in the middle of her family. Under the sun, in the tent there, she will come out and sit there. And she will weep from sunrise to sunset. 12 months, not 12 hours, or 12 weeks, days, not 12 weeks, 12 months, until they felt so bad for her. And they said, send her back. I said, let her go to her husband. And then she walked away, and then the family of Salman said, well, now you can take your son to you. And then, subhanAllah, she made hijrah with one of the mushrikeen who took her there. She made it to Nadi. And again, what happened to that lady when her husband died? When her husband died, she and she, Rasul, she called Rasul, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Salman is dying. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes to the house and he sees Abu Salman's eyes being rolled. And then he closed his eyes and he said, Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa Indeed, sight follows the soul. And then the household of Abu Salman, they all cried. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't say anything bad about yourselves. Say only good things. And then he turned to Umar Salama and he said, say this to him. Allahumma ajib me fi musibati wa hudfi khayr minna. Oh Allah, help me with my calamity and give me someone better than what I lost. Give me something better than what I lost. Umar Salama said, I said to myself, who can be better than Abu Salama? First of the believers, First man who made hijrah, a man who died until, until the last day he died, was he gave his life for Allah. Who can be better than Abu Salama? And then the messenger of Allah after her idda came and he proposed to her. And then she said, now I know there was only one man who could be better than Abu Salama. And that man came and he married me, sallallahu alayhi wa See, Allah reward her because she was there for Allah. She sacrificed for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was willing to give up everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we need for our sisters. We need, when you love someone, you love for Allah. When you dislike someone, we want you to dislike for the sake of Allah. 
When you help me someone, help them for the sake of the world. When you assist helping that person for the sake of the world. When you marry someone, marry that person for the sake of the world. Because in the name of the Lord, I mean, because I'm saying, Man, I have a little bit. وأبغض لله وأعطى لله ومنع لله وأنكح لله فقد استكمل إيمانه. Whoever gives loves for the sake of Allah, hates for the sake of Allah, gives for the sake of Allah, withholds for the sake of Allah, marries for the sake of Allah, that person indeed perfect his or her إيمان. Perfect إيمان. You don't marry someone because he is good looking, mashallah, or he is driving a nice SUV, or he, you know, he has a nice shiny thong that his mother ironed for him. You know, he marries someone because this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He marries that person because that person can be a good father for your child. Can be someone who will hold your hand and say, let us take this journey to Allah together and we will not part until we enter Jannah together. And this is what we, was happening with a lot of sisters. They have deen, they have taqwa, they have concern about Islam, they want to be there, but they may be useless guys. They marry one of those because, you know, for whatever reason. So remember this ummah, and I always say, and I will, until I die, I will keep saying this, this Ummah is nothing without ladies, without sisters. You were the first one who died for who accepted Islam, Khadija radiallahu anhu. You were the first one who died for the sake of Allah, Sumayya radiallahu anhu. You were the first one who gave for the sake of Allah, Khadija radiallahu anhu. So you were the pioneers of this deen. You were there. The only thing that you didn't receive first, or you didn't receive, was the Risal of the wife. Even when Khalid was dying, he came to Rasulullah and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, give Khalid a glad tidings that she will have a house in Jannah. In another narration, he saw her coming and she said, Khalid is coming, give her salam for her Lord and for myself and give her glad tidings of Jannah. So what we need, we need Khalid. We need Asma bint Abi Bakr, radiyallahu anha. What did Asma do? You know, she was pregnant, nine months pregnant. Nine months. And she used to climb up the mountain, bring food to Rasulullah and her father Abu Bakr. And she's nine months pregnant and came back three days in a row. MashaAllah, Dumar, MashaAllah. Okay. First, what it was, the one week, oh my God, call the doctor, mashallah, one money. And this lady, she's nine months pregnant, and she's climbing up a mountain that men could not climb. And then, even when Abajah came to the house, and he said, where's your father? She said, I don't know. And he slapped her so hard, and here it started falling, it flew away. And she said, I couldn't see anything because Al Fajr, she called Al Fajr, he had big hands, he was strong. She could have, she almost lost her consciousness. And when her father, Abu Muhammad, the blind man, when he came and he said, Abja'akum bi nafsihi wa man, he said, He took, he left you alone and he took his wealth because Abu Bakr, he took everything. To make sure Rasulullah reached in the city of Medina safely. He took all his wealth to maintain and to make sure Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi has everything that he Then she went and she bought a sack and she filled it with rock. And she said, No, he left this loss. And the old man said, MashaAllah, a lot of gold, MashaAllah. And she said, I didn't want to break the heart of the old man until that he didn't leave anything else. That was Asma bint Abi Bakr. She did for the sake of Allah. She did for the sake of this deen. And the day that we have ladies like Khadija, like Asma, like Umar Salama, like Aisha, like those ladies, that is the day, that's the day we can say, Alhamdulillah, Islam is good. And I guarantee you, sisters, we come to that point. 
You know why? Because the majority of people coming back to Islam are men. Ladies will be that time. And that shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving that the, the, is bringing the dignity and the honor and the status of Islam once again as he did at the beginning of the sun to women. But what I want you to understand, I want you just to realize that. I want you to realize that you're special. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you. And you're here not because of your own accord. You're here because Allah has a better plan and greater plans for you. But do not disappoint the sun by being, as they say, material girls. You know, be fake. All you're concerned about is your makeup, you know, and you know, all you do is, you know, in that sense, but realize you are the mother, you are the school, you are the factor that produced men who can, inshallah, carry the banners, the banners of Islam and take you to a higher level. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and reward you all. If the sisters don't have, I mean, if you have a question, sure you have a question, I think the best thing is to give them papers. And write them down or give them a phone number or they can text message or whatever that the sisters want to do but I prefer if you write your questions. And I'll be here inshallah until Salat al -Dhuh. So inshallah we can entertain most of your questions. When it comes to the other topic that I wanted to address which is what I'll be thinking about writing questions calmly and silently Da'wah grooms and da'wah the youth in da'wah. I like just to say three things. Mainly, I won't go over three points. First of the point, must understand anyone who wants to give da'wah, then they need to have the knowledge of giving da'wah. العلم as Ali bin Abi Talib he said رضي الله عنه الناس ثلاث عالم رباني the three are from three different categories and one of them is عالم رباني and the عالم رباني is something that we're not there yet second قال ومتعلم على سبيل النجاة and a person who is trying to learn for salvation to protect himself and the ulama said, this person has four conditions. Students of knowledge, they have four conditions. You learn the correct knowledge, not anything. Because everything that you read is knowledge. Magic, learning math is knowledge. Allah said, they teach people magic. So magic is knowledge, but that is harmful knowledge. So you got to learn useful knowledge. Not of Sharia. Second, it must be authentic knowledge. See, a lot of people, they just collect anything. They don't authenticate, they don't you know, filter, they, they learn anything and they read anything and then they convey the message which is wrong. Third thing, you apply and implement that end. You gotta implement the end yourself. Fourth thing, a sub. You must have sub giving that end. Why? Because when you tell someone to do such and such and such, they're not going to take it just because you said it. They want to agree with you. So they will challenge you. And sometimes they may say things that is not pleasing to you. So the ulama said, you must have sub for in nadalik and in azmimum. Having that sub is what it takes to achieve a job. So that is the first point. Number two, as the Dawah groups, number two, girls should give Dawah to girls. And boys should give Dawah only to boys. I don't want Facebook Dawah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Nowadays the sisters and the boy brothers and the they give that on each other through Facebook. We don't want that on Twitter, Facebook, you know, chit chat. That is not that one. That one, the Sahabiyat used to give that to the women. The Ansar in the city of Medina 
They used to give da'wah to the non-Muslim people of Medina. The people, the women of Quraysh, they used to give da'wah, Umm al-Jameen and others, to women, not to men. And men, likewise. Third thing, you must have preference points. You must have someone you should, all of you can come back to. And that person must be an imam, must be an ali, must be a someone who has the knowledge of da'wah. You just don't go there and say, we're going to create this our own youth da'wah group, and we have no you know, reference we can go back to. We know, no, that is the wrong thing to do. A lot of young people do this, and that is the wrong thing. What you need to do, do all the work, but you must take it to someone. You say, Shah Yusuf, 